Well, hey, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carolyn, and I have Jody here with me, and we are so excited to talk about the foundation of hope in the home. Um, we've had such a great time preparing for this. We love to talk about hope, of course, hope-filled conversations. It just goes right along with our, <laughs> our whole theme. So um, we're excited. But Jody, you want to open us up in prayer as we begin? Yeah, absolutely. Father God, thank you that we can have real hope. It's not false hope. And we can, we can, because Lord, I, I know that when we know you as our Lord and Savior, and, and I know from our relationship with you and reading in your word over and over again, you are faithful to keep your promises. So when I know that we place our hope in you, it's not in vain. So Lord, I pray that you would take this conversation today and that that precious soul that might be listening to this, that feels hopeless. I pray, Lord, that you would use this to stir in her a fresh hope in you, God, that by the end of this, her hope would be renewed, it would be steadfast, and that she would just hunger and crave more of you and be intentional in pursuing getting to know you through your word more. So have your will and way in this conversation today. May it glorify your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 All right. Well, let's start out with a hope word study. We love to talk about the foundation of hope, and we're going to talk about what that word, um, just a good definition of that word before we dive in to all the scriptures. I think a simple way to say it is uh, hope is expectation, waiting patiently. And I think that's key because sometimes when we hope for something, we're like, okay, I've been hoping for 24 hours. That hadn't happened yet. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We need to be patient. We ought to be patient in our, in our hope uh, for something we know will come. And that's the thing. Hope is hoping for something that will come. And I, and I just love the way that is. And so we want to dive a little bit into hope in the Bible. So, yeah. So yes, that hope in something that we know will happen. We can have that kind of hope because we're rooted in Jesus and we know yeah. um, when we place our hope in just things happening on the earth, it's a little bit different, but if we place our hope in what we know is going to happen through Jesus, that's wow that's such a comfort and a joy. Um, all right. So I'm just going to share a couple scriptures with hope in it, just giving us a good overview of hope. Um, the first one is Romans 5, 5. It says, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And then Romans 8, 25, it says, but if we have hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And that goes back to you yeah, <laughs> with yeah. patience. Yes. Um, we can wait with patience because we know it's going to happen. Everything God says in his word is true and he's faithful. Mm -hmm. So um, when we're living in that hope. We can, we can wait with patience, even though it's hard. It's still hard sometimes, but <laughs> just, just don't ever pray for patience. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, how many people I said, I should have never prayed for patience because here <laughs> I'm stuck in this line or I'm waiting here and yeah, God must be teaching me patience. So anyway, go on. Yes. <laughs> and then Romans 15 verses 12 through 13 says, and again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I want to abound in hope in my life. So we can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm um, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. And that really sums it up. It's all about um, who we're placing our hope in. And if we place our hope in Jesus, he's we can trust him to keep his promise. He's faithful. He's, he's always there. So um, we can experience that hope, this, this hope that we've described throughout the script, these scriptures through the grace of God part, poured out in our life. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 16 through 17 says, Nay, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself, God and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Um, that's just talking about this extravagant hope that we can have in our life through the grace that's been extended to us. So um, I love when we're studying a topic such as hope and the other foundations. I love to look up stories in the Bible that kind of 
help my mind focus on hope poured out in somebody's life. And so um, I'm just going to mention a couple of them and then we'll focus in on one story. But of course, the story of Abraham always makes me think of hope. Um, yeah. I'm sure it, it does you too, if you're familiar with it. Um, Abraham was married to Sarah for a long time. They were very old. God promised to them children. Uh, they were in their 90s, still no children. Um, but Abraham hoped in that promise that God would make him the father of many nations because that's what God said he was going to do. And um, can you imagine waiting years and years and years and being elderly and still no children, but still hoping in that promise? Um, in Romans 4.18, it says he hoped against hope, which I think is so, it's a cool phrase that, you know, he had that hope. Uh, beyond what would be normal to hope for because he hoped in God's promise. And of course, we know that um, God blessed him with Isaac and made him the father of many nations. So um, I love that story of hope. And then um, again, the Hebrews in Egypt, um, you'll remember the story of the Egypt or the uh, Hebrews leaving Egypt, God um, sending Moses to tell Pharaoh to let, let his people go. Um, these these people have been living, living in bondage and slavery, hoping for deliverance for many years. And um, it took a long time for God to send Moses as, as the deliverer to lead um, the Hebrews out of Egypt. But wow, what a story of hope. And then, you know, God parting the Red Sea and leading them to the promised land eventually. I love that story. Um, but then I, wanna, I really want to focus on the persecuted early church. Um, Recently, I've been reading a lot in the New Testament about the early church, and I think sometimes we forget that as the early church was growing and spreading, they faced a lot of persecution. Um, those early believers were um, often driven from their homes. They were kicked out of town. They were beaten. They were arrested. They faced a lot of persecution um, that we in America are not familiar with, um, but they placed their hope in Christ in knowing that this world was not the end. Anything they experienced here would be worth it to following Jesus because they knew the hope um, of eternal life and being with him, with Jesus in heaven forever. Um, and in 2 Corinthians 1.10, um, it says, on him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. And I think that kind of sums up the early believers. Um, that's where they were placing their hopes. So they pressed on serving the Lord. They pressed on spreading the gospel because They'd set their hope not on things going well here on the earth, but on things um, that are eternal in the Lord. So um, I love that story of hope just played out in the lives of these early believers. And then First Timothy verses four, or chapter four, verses nine through ten says, For this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. So I love, I love how those verses kind of summarize. Um, hope playing out in our life. No, that, that is so, all of that is just so good and it's relevant for all of us where we are today. And, and I think of this Corona world that we're in and in the persecuted church um, where they weren't allowed, you know, to meet. And even still today, I know of stories where that is taking place and, and, and I know they long to be together and unified and, and, our world where we are today, um, you know, what specifically here in America, we're, we're allowed to be open and, and to meet in our church, but coronavirus has caused a lot of, um, a lot of um, division in a, in a sense, uh, to where some churches uh, want to meet, don't want to meet, people do want to meet. I mean, it just, I'm not going to go into all that. That's why I'm being cautious of how I'm saying this. <laughs> but the, the, the point is, uh, early on when COVID came about, the churches had not met. And what came and rose up from that is a desire and a longing to be together. And it reminds me of uh, Psalms 84, where it's a prayer uh, about the Lord's house. And this particular person, it said, and the commentators are saying that uh, perhaps this, this person may have, um, for some reason, he wasn't allowed to be in the house of the Lord. And it might have been an illness. It might have been because he was banned. Uh, he was put in with some other group and in distance from the church. But for whatever reason, did not prevent his longing and his craving 
to be in the house of the Lord. And if you ever get a chance just to sit and read Psalms 84 and just read, read through it very slowly and, and, and consider what's going on in that background. Uh, but one of the, the, a couple of the things is how blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And, and, and this is a common saying that a lot of us know for a day in your courts is better than a thousand outside. So he was outside of his courts and just to be one day to be a, uh, a door holder, you know, to, to, to be just that close in the presence uh, of his dwelling and, and with the church um, that we can, we can, we can continue to have that hope and that longing that one day as Christ followers, there's no corona, there's no government, there's nothing that's going to prevent us from being in the Lord's house, and a day is going to be like a thousand years, and it's going to be beautiful, so I think that's something that we can all rest our hope in, mm -hmm. uh, so that, so, but to move on a little bit in the conversation here, you know, we want to talk about a little bit about hope in our homes. Mm -hmm. And I think we want to talk about how we can apply this in our homes, but also why um why we have this hope in in the lord so um when we look at the world today and um all that's going on with viruses and politics and all these circumstances that are happening it is really easy to feel hopeless um and for those living without christ i mean it's very very easy to feel hopeless um but I think knowing that we have that hope, who we have that hope in can change our perspective on everything else. Um, so we know if we have that hope in the Lord, knowing what's going to happen in the future, knowing that um, one day the Lord is going to come back and make everything right. Um, that kind of shifts our perspective as we live in this time. So um, the Lord is, is worthy of all our hope. He's trustworthy. Everything he says is true and everything he's promised to do, he's going to do. So um, reminding, I think it's really important for us to remind ourselves of that, but also remind each other of that. Um, I don't know about you, but there've been times where I need to be reminded of that hope, reminded of that truth. Um, sometimes things look really grim and it's hard to remind ourselves of that hope, but um, I think that's really important for us to remind each other. Um, that's that's why we have that's the beauty of the body of believers that we can kind of uplift each other with that. So, um, Titus one verse two says, "In hope of, etern of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began." That's that's where our hope is. That eternal life in Him the God who never lies. Um, so we're not going to place our, our um, hope in circumstances changing or situations going a particular way that you want it to go. If our hope is in him who is unchanging and faithful, um, the circumstances can continue to go crazy, but we have that strong and steady hope um, as an anchor to our soul for the Lord, because we're hoping in the Lord, not in ourselves. So first um, Thessalonians four, verse 13 says, even when we face death, the hope we have in Jesus allows us to grieve differently than those who have no hope. So that's, um, that verse, that was not a verse. That was just my commentary on the verse. But look up first, first <laughs> Thessalonians sure 4, <laughs> again. I just wanted to make sure that, it, that I wasn't like, not rewriting scripture, but First Thessalonians 4 verse 13 reminds us that even in the face of death, we can, we can grieve differently. We have, we can look at things that are hard and challenging in our life differently than those who have no hope. Um, so that's an encouragement to my spirit when I'm discouraged about things happening or see, see things happening that um, just feel hopeless and make me grieve. <laughs> um, we can set our focus and hope in the Lord um, who never fails, who never lies, who's always faithful and unchanging. And that's an encouragement to me. Oh, it's an encouragement to me too. And, and again, it reminds me of sometimes I can go down these rabbit trail trails and, and when God's silent and just feeling hopeless, it's like, why, why is he not moving or answering these things or, or what have you? We have to be, uh, ha make a decision like even right now, if you've not done this before, make a decision today that when you go through these struggles and you feel hopeless, that you're going to go pause, wait a minute, 
where am I, where's my focus? Where am I placing my hope in? You know, mm-hmm. so we lose our hope when we stop placing our hope in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. we, we can grow weary and everything mm-hmm. seems dim. But if we take a moment and we reflect on our past with God and his faithfulness, um, and if you're a new Christ follower and you don't really have that past, I bet you if, if you look some things about um, in your past, you can see how God's using them in the future. So he's faithful mm-hmm. even in those things. And, and if nothing else, you can go to God's word. And, and that's all what I hope filled conversations is about, Carolyn. When you were talking about mm-hmm. that, I was like, that is it. <laughs> we want to speak hope into everyone's soul and to remind you that you can have hope when you're a Christ follower. You have to have hope in, in God. And all these topics and discussions that we have is all based on the foundation of focusing on Christ and pointing back to him. Because it's, if you place in anyone or anything else, you're going to end up ultimately hopeless at times. Mm-hmm. But we mm-hmm. never have to be hopeless mm-hmm. when we have our hope in Christ. I've got a quote I wanted to share with you. It's from Oswald Chambers. It says, remember whose you are and whom you serve. Provoke yourself, that's the key word, provoke yourself by recollection and your affection for God will increase tenfold. Your imagination will not be starved any longer, but will be quick and enthusiastic and your hope will be inexpressibly bright. Is it, I mean, that, that is just truth. Mm-hmm. That is, that is yeah. so much truth packed in there. And so mm-hmm. we can also reflect on the confidence that we have in God and recognizing that he doesn't lie. He keeps mm-hmm. his word and he's able to keep his word. And mm-hmm. we need to remind ourselves of that when things just seem really gloomy. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, the last part of this conversation, I wanted to just kind of bring in um, one of the verses Carolyn mentioned earlier. It's one of my favorites, and it's the Hebrews 10, 23. And it is actually the New Living Translation. So if you're trying to find this translation, um, that's where it's from. But it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. And so I want to go through and give you a few examples of what that looks like practically and things that you can live out in your home. And you can, you can speak these hope prom, hope filled promises to, to those that are in your home, to yourself, if you're single in your home, whatever age Mm -hmm. or stage that you're in. And I would even encourage you to really consider putting these on three by five cards, or or if you like to do art, do something. If, you, if you're working outside of the home now, place them on your desk. Let it be a reminder to you and a witness to those that walk by you. I've had several women that have done that in the past, and it's generated conversations for a coworker that normally wouldn't talk to them, but because they saw that promise on their desk, it forged a conversation that felt like there was somebody that they can talk that is spiritual, so to speak, and ask questions about God and ask for prayer. And it's, it's just a beautiful tool in your mm-hmm. home and outside of your home. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to go through um, kind of quickly, uh, but there's 12 promises. I think it's, it's valuable um, to share those on here right now. So if you don't have your pen and paper out, go ahead and get that out. Yeah, and, and maybe um, we can put this on the website too so that they can easily access this too. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think that'd be a good idea. So number one is uh, Joshua 1.9. And again, what I want you to do later is perhaps to go back and read the scripture for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I want you to summarize in your words the promise. But what I've got here is my summary of those promises. So in Joshua 1.9, I find that a promise that God will be with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And then number two, uh, Psalms 121, it's a promise of protection. And then Matthew 11 verses 28 through 30 is a promise to exchange your yoke for his. What a good promise that is. Mm -hmm. And then John 10, 10, a promise of abundant life. Mm, I'm already excited this, you know, because yeah. I cling to these, these promises. And then Romans 1, 16 through 17, it's a promise of salvation to those who believe. Mm-hmm. And then Romans eight twenty eight, it's a promise that all things will work out for good. Yeah. 
in Romans 8, 38 through 39, a promise that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Mm. I love that verse. We mentioned that in our, in our love session. I love, I love that the love of God. And then first Corinthians 10 verses 13, a promise to provide a way out of temptation. Mm. I'll, yes, I've used that promise in many a times. <laughs> and then in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, it's a promise of comfort in affliction. Oh, and I've used that many times. I've gone to his word in my affliction and I've asked him to comfort me. And he follows through with his promise every time as I just seek that from him. And our 10th one is 2 Corinthians 5, 17, a promise that the old will pass away. And we are made new in him. Mm -hmm. Then Philippians 1 verse 6 is a promise that he will complete the work he began in you. What an encouragement as we're talking about pressing onward in, in the faith and in our, in our journey as a believer that he'll complete that work. Um, and then Philippians 4 verse 7 is a promise of peace. And wow, hope gives us that peace. And so what a great promise. Yeah, it is. And, and so that's the 12 promises. And just to remind us that um, we can have hope when we believe God at his word, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love 2 Corinthians 1, 12. Uh, it says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so God is not a man that he might lie or a son of man that he might change his mind. Does he speak and not act or promise and not fulfill? Well, no. And that's from Numbers 23, 19. So that's just so, so I've been encouraged and just talking about um, renewing and, and, and the, the hope that I have in Christ. And, and when, when there's struggles in the family, when there's struggles um, outside of, of that, um, we, it doesn't, you're just going to always have struggles in some way, form, or fashion, it might be a simple struggle. It might be a difficult struggle. But nonetheless, if, if we are willing to not fight that on our own and seek God as our refuge and go, I need, I need to be reminded of my hope that I can have in you today, Lord. And if you, and if you get these promises written down somewhere on a flip card or what have you, you can go back to that and you don't have to, it's not work. It's already done for you. And you can go back and look at one of those promises, then open up the word, read the word itself, and then ask God, use this to minister to my soul and give me hope where I just feel hopeless today. Yeah. yeah. And he so, will. <laughs> yeah, he will. He will. So yeah. that wraps us up on uh, our, I believe it's our last session yeah. uh, for uh, foundations in the home for any age or any stage. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a joy to go through all of this. Uh, it is, it has been a growth for, I know for myself. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Just digging in his word and understanding um, what this looks like practically, biblically, how we can apply it in our lives, and just to be encouraged. Um, and two, I just want to remind you ladies that are listening uh, or, or watching this, uh, if you've got a friend, a coworker, a dear, uh, um, a dear close friend, a family member, that you, what you think might just benefit from some of the things that we're sharing on Hope Field Conversations, we encourage you to share this with them. Um, you know, I, I think that's loving uh, and kind to others. Uh, when, you know, and, and if you're afraid of the rejection of, I'm not sure what they would think of doing that, might I suggest you just simply going, hey, I've been listening to this lately. It's been encouraging to me. And I thought of you, just maybe you might be able to uh, or like to enjoy this if, if not, that's fine. I just thought of you and I wanted to share it with you. And then leave it up to God to do the rest. So pray about somebody, you know, that the Lord would lead uh, somebody on your heart to share this with. Because this isn't just for us. This isn't just for us. This is for everyone. And because God's word never returns void. And so these hope-filled conversations, um, they ultimately glorify God and they grow us and they encourage us. So... Yeah. yeah. So let me close the same prayer um, for today. 
Lord, thank you so much that you are the faithful God who always keeps his promises and is unchanging no matter what circumstances we face in our personal life, in the world. Thank you that our hope doesn't have to rest in any circumstance or situation, but our hope rests in you. Thank you for the promises you've given us of, of eternal life with you. And then all these many promises throughout your word that you've given to your children. I pray that as we live our life, we can dwell in that hope. And um, because of that hope, we can serve you and, and honor you with our life and, and be encouraged to continue on pressing on in our faith until um, the day that our faith is completed and we're united with you. And Lord, I pray um, for these women that are listening. I pray that you will um, reveal yourself as they study your word and um, encourage their hearts and um, help them experience that hope that only you offer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, ladies, uh, this is not the end of Hope-Filled Conversations. We've got some more goodies on the way, and so you'll find out about those when that episode airs. So uh, be tuned in and so excited about what's coming uh, up next. So until next time.